after the hurricane, people were just throwing stuff out left and right. Hey everyone, it's Moni here at Craft Clutch and I have an episode of Garbage to Gorgeous for you. And this video is sponsored by Black Dog Salvage and they love to salvage stuff too. So this is a perfect partnership. Be sure to check them out over at blackdogsalvage.com. Here's the ottoman and the very simple story of the ottoman is after the hurricane, people were just throwing stuff out left and right. It got moldy, it was disgusting, it was on the side of the road for weeks, and I liked the shape of the legs, and I thought it would be a fun project. The very first thing I'm gonna do is remove all this fabric, and that's what I normally would do anyway, just because if it's from a house that I don't know, um, I don't know where it's been stored or what it's been through, I always take the fabric off anyhow. The amount of staples in this thing, just wow. I tried my angle grinder and my Dremel to try to cut through those staples and just get that fabric off and it did not work I had to call in the big guns and got Greg He had to come out and help me at one point I had to try to hold it down while he was trying to rip it off that did not work either So we just had to go one by one staple one by one and get them all out Once I did I got rid of that nasty fabric and the foam and I got rid of the rest of the staples after all the fabric was off, I cleaned it again. I had cleaned it previous to taking the fabric off with a like a specific mold control. And then I went back with hydrogen peroxide to make sure all of the mold was dead, if there was any left. And then I also bleached the mold stains and did a final clean with TSP. Finally, we're gonna start painting. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Check out that beautiful color, Appalachian Sunset. I have cleaned this thing seven ways to Sunday and it could not be cleaner. So it's time to paint. And the nice thing about the Black Dog Salvage paint is that you do not have to prime ahead of time. You just need to make sure it's really super clean. So I'm gonna do the underside first. And the paint is self-leveling, so we don't have to worry about that either. And really a lot of this part won't show, but I'm just gonna paint it anyway. I had considered using a sprayer for this piece, but it wasn't a very big piece, so I thought I would just brush it. It was a lot like painting spindles on a staircase, but at least the paint went on beautifully. I painted the bottom and then I flipped it over just to make sure I caught every place and that there weren't any drips, and then I did do a second coat. Now I'm gonna apply my Show Dog Top Coat. The Show Dog Top Coat brushed on beautifully and it dried nice and smooth and I had gotten the show dog in satin. I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna upholster with the cutest fabric ever. And I have a great tip on how to create a cushion. If you've ever bought foam at a craft store or a fabric store, you know how expensive it is. So my friend over at Making It With Abby, she had said, go get a mattress topper, like a foam pad from Walmart and use that instead. So smart. So that is what I'm gonna do. I unfolded it and then I traced around the top of the stool so that I would have the right shape to cut it. Once I cut it out, I did another layer because I want this to be nice and plush. Then I did the butt test and thought, nope, I think I need another layer. In all, I think I ended up doing four layers now for the cutest fabric ever. Da, 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 da. Black and white dogs. How cute is that? I had the fabric face down on the floor, two layers of quilt batting, and then my foam pieces. I take my stapler and the way I do it is I will go from one side to the other. I will staple across, across, and then go to the next sides and then do across, across, right in the middle. That way all the pieces are stretched tight already. And then I check to make sure I have the fabric on straight so the pattern's not all wonky. And then what I do is I finish one side. And I'll do all of the one side and then I will go directly across and that way it stretches it in one direction first before I go to the other sides. That way the pattern won't be stretched in different directions. Then it's on to the corners and you want to make those as neat as you can. Always remember to do a good job on the corners if you can. And a lot of times just cutting out the excess is going to make a huge difference. Corners are a little awkward on this 
particular piece and I'm just trying to staple it where it was stapled before just because there are staple holes in there so I want to have that covered otherwise I just would have stapled boom 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 along the edge that's why I'm going this far down and then just create some pleats so it looks nice and neat and then repeat on the other side and then you want to go around and cut off all of the excess fabric I'm gonna add trim just to give it a finished look. And I'm gonna do that in a couple different ways. First thing on the bottom, I'm gonna do it here because I'm not putting a cover all across the bottom. Um, if I had some fabric, I could easily do that. I could just attach it around. But since I don't have any fabric on hand, then I can always do that later. I'm just gonna use this cute paw print ribbon. I'm gonna go right up to the edge here, glue it on, press it down. And then I'm gonna take my staple gun on the edge just on the edge. Make sure it's stuck in there good. And I will take it all the way to this edge. Give it a snip. Then I'll take some permanent glue and just glue it in between here. But I'm just gonna tack it with a little hot glue for now. So these corners aren't especially pretty, so I'm gonna put some trim around it and I'm putting this cording on there. And the thing with the cording is it will unravel. That's why you have to have tape over the end where you cut it. So I'm gonna just start that piece in the back and I'm gonna go from here, this indent down until I have all that nonsense covered. Again, I'm using hot glue. You can use something more permanent or a combination thereof. Now I have a piece of tape and where I want to cut it, I'm going to just put that piece of tape around the cording and I'm going to give it a trim. Okay, that makes that look a little bit better, doesn't it? So I'll do that on all four legs. Now I have some black ribbon I'm going to put as a trim around the bottom of the stool. So I'll just staple it right down at the edge of the bottom here. And every so often I'm just going to use a staple now I have this super cute ribbon that has little paw prints on there. And I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna glue this over where I stapled. It's my trick to hide the staples. Here it is all finished. I still have to pick off some hot glue here and there, but there's the top. There's the trim with the paws. And underneath, you can see the other trim with the paws. And look at that beautiful color. And it's comfy. It passes the butt test. So if you like this project and you want to try the paint, it's Black Dog Salvage Paint. And you can go to blackdogsalvage.com, check it out. And I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. They have all kinds of colors. The paint is great. It went on great. And it looks great. It's supposed to be quite durable. And I think it would be great for your decor. And you could come up with tons of color combinations. So go check them out and I will definitely see you next time. Remember, life's too short not to shimmer. So grab your glue gun and your glitter and don't forget to check out this video if you wanna see another furniture makeover.